It was a scene guaranteed to bring dismay to many in America. People dancing the night away to all sorts of modern music. For more than two decades, the temperance movement campaigned against drunkenness and associated behavior. But in January 1920, supporters of temperance got their way. The sale and distribution of alcohol was banned. They called it prohibition and considered it a noble experiment. I can't believe that anybody, any right person, right thinking person today could ever suggest that prohibition was a noble experiment. Prohibition was one of the worst things that ever happened to this country. Prohibition gave rise to the bootleg years, and bootlegging led to organized crime. Gangsters and their accomplices were suddenly everywhere, on the streets, in City Hall, in cheap establishments, and in high-class parties. Prohibition, let's face it, uh, prohibition is what created the mob. Gangsters inspired movies, filled newspapers, and bankrolled the new kind of music called jazz. The aim of Prohibition had been to dim the bright lights of Broadway and bring people back to the traditional values of hard work and sobriety. But it backfired. In the period of economic boom that followed World War I, people didn't want sobriety. They wanted fun. Prohibition divided the nation, and half of America went underground. This was once the best kept secret in Manhattan. In a midtown basement, beneath the bustle of New York's 52nd Street, there lies a hidden treasure from the Roaring Twenties. A massive door cut from the brickwork of a neighboring wall and weighing a hefty 4,000 pounds protects a wine cellar. This wine cellar now plays host to upscale soirees and high-powered business lunches. But it started very differently as part of a speakeasy, the 21 Club. The speakeasy as an American institution was a product of prohibition and the 21 Club was the pick of the crop. Speakeasies, or hidden saloons and nightclubs, sold liquor illegally. And thanks to prohibition, respectable people found themselves on the wrong side of the law. It opened in 1920, and while gangsters never ran the club, its suppliers must have had shady connections. During prohibition, the 21 Club was raided several times by federal agents. So the club's owners deployed a wide range of covert devices to keep the agents at bay. When uh, they did appear at the front door, a, a series of, of bells uh, were pressed and uh, buzzers were sounded and the, uh, the shelves, the back shelves, which, uh, which held uh, bottles of spirits and wines and glassware uh, flipped upside down, the bottles and glassware went crashing down into the New York City sewer system and a sand pit. The collapsible shelves have long gone, but the most unusual feature of the club is still in working order, the 4,000-pound secret cellar door. It was really difficult for federal agents to come in and find the door that uh, is behind me at present. They, the federal agents, did come in and try and find that using matches and other devices, uh, but were never able to find it. And this is why the police were stumped. The door could be opened only using a special key in a special way. You would insert this 18-inch skewer in there, uh, trigger the mechanism on the back of the door, and then push open the 4,000-pound door. And in we go. The 21 Club was a custom-built speakeasy designed for breaking the law. But as a speakeasy, it was far from unique. Across America during the 1920s, no fewer than 200,000 speakeasies opened for business. This is one of New York's oldest bars, Pete's Tavern. But during Prohibition, it too became a speakeasy. 